right, welcome to Fire Dojo. Today we are going to test uh, a new set. This is uh, Bald Cypress, which grows down south, United States. And our spindle today is Evening Primrose. Seven sixteenths of an inch at the base here. Okay. to grab a little bit of dirt to raise up the floor so I could save on energy a little bit. Raising the floor up, um, means that the coal will form, uh, faster, higher up. You don't have to fill the whole notch. I don't want to have to fill the whole notch. So it's starting to smoke. Going for speed and rotation. So I'm going to take a run down. Looks like a coal to me. So you expend less energy when you raise up the floor. So these notches are pretty high, which also means that you can get a lot of um, you can get a couple of tries out of each notch so all right then uh, the coal can't go anywhere because of the design it sits in there okay and then you put it in your tinder bundle okay. and then you would put your set away when you're done all right, thanks for watching. Bye. All right, welcome to Fire Dojo. And uh, what I'm doing today is testing uh, a new set. It's never been used. This set is made uh, entirely of black willow. Okay, it's never been used. You got, I got some dirt down here just to raise up the floor. And raising up the floor means that uh, I have to use less energy and less time to light the coal because the coal is going to form here but because I raised up the floor I don't have to fill the whole notch so this bow is made of rattan and the pressure hand brace is made of black willow as well it's the same wood as well as the spindle the spindle is black willow. So the whole thing is black willow except for the bow. And the reason why I didn't make a bow out of black willow is because the black willow would be too fragile. It probably would not, unless it was a really large piece of wood, it would not withstand the, uh, the bend. It'll just break.
this is long strokes. Let's have a look, shall we? That looks like a coal. To me, it's not a coal unless it <coughs> glows. So you can see, and I do this most of the time <clears throat> with my Bojo sets, because I purposely make them tall so they can get more use out of the board. But raising up the floor to begin with, with dirt or anything dry, cuts the time and the energy that you need to do that with. So, and there, that's Black Willow. Thanks for watching. All right, so I had a lot of trouble trying to find uh, para wood or rubber wood uh, raw here in the United States. For some reason, it's just really hard to come by. It comes to the United States mostly as finished products. And uh, as much as I really did try to get raw para wood, rubber wood, um, I ended up settling for just buying a piece of furniture made out of para wood, rubber wood. So I ordered a coffee table. Uh, this is a shelf on the coffee table. As you can see, it is put together by pieces of Power wood, rubber wood, laminated together. Okay, and uh, this is the underside of the top. This one is a shelf. These are the legs. Now the legs are whole. These are whole solid pieces of the power wood, the rubber wood. They are 17 inches tall, but I know that they are one and a qu one and one eighth inches across square but at least they're solid these are uh, three quarters of an inch in uh, width uh, deep I should say and 16 inches wide and 34 and a half inches in length for the shelf. The top is three feet tall and is also three quarters of an inch top is also 17 and 3 quarters inches across or wide all right so my job right now is to turn these into one and a quarter inch deep boards which means I need to take I need to cut out sections and glue them together so that uh, this is twice as thick. So that's the first thing I need to do. And I need to make sure I find pieces that are not, don't have slits in them. So I'm going to measure those out, cut those out, and glue them together to make solid boards. All right, here we go. All right, so uh, on my table saw, I cut up that uh, one of the, I cut the shelf, but not the uh, 
um, not the top. I took those runners off the top and I cut them up too. So this is really what's left of that one shelf that I was going to cut up. And uh, the pieces I cut to make a large crutch drill hearth board is here and is being glued up. Okay. Uh, I'm still going to cut this up to make a uh, power wood, rubber wood uh, crutch drill, the actual spindle. So here I, uh, when I cut that shelf up, these are for bows. They're an inch and a half wide, okay? And these were the runners that were on the uh, top piece that I took off, took all the screws out, and I cut them equally to approximately three quarters of an inch. And these are, this is part of the shelf. I cut them at three quarters of an inch as well. And these are going to be made into reloads, I believe. All right, I can figure that out. So I'm laying this dry, and then I have to cut up this top and put it together for a for a spindle. All right, we're moving along. So this is uh, right now. Uh, an inch and a half in width and it's over four inches wide and at present it's uh, a hair over two feet long 24 inches because I still have to when I clean it up I got to cut the ends off so I'm going to do that all right let's keep going all right welcome to fire dojo uh, we're in my kitchen because uh, it's dark outside and there's no light. So today I am for the first time testing a rubber wood or also known as para wood uh, crutch drill. This set is also a uh, toggle drill so another person could hold this as a T-brace for the spindle but uh, this set is also a crutch drill and I'm going to Test it now. This has never been used. <clears throat> so the uh, the base is made out of rubber wood. The crutch brace is made out of rubber wood. The spindle, the bow, all made out of rubber wood. The reload here, which is uh, when this gets worn down, you just pop another one in there. Is rubber wood. The entire set is rubber wood. So I'm gonna test this for the first time. Might get a little smoky in here, but it's a kitchen. Now, as usual, I'm going to. You can see this has never been used, right? I'm gonna. This is really high. This is like at least an inch high inside. So I'm gonna raise up the floor with some paper towels so that I don't have to use as much energy and it takes less time to fill the notch. See, I've raised the floor. And all of us at the same time are gonna see what happens because I have no idea what's gonna happen. All right, so this fits here. Hurt myself. Just pop my string out. It's just getting warm. Bit of a rush because um, I have to go to work. Making 
adjustments. There we go. Smoking. So I'm going to increase speed. So that was my very first rubber wood or power wood coal. I'm going to put that in the thing for a minute. I'm going to put this set aside so I know that works. And for my second test, Do something that I've really never done before. And that is a hybrid. <clears throat> and by hybrid I mean uh, you see this spindle? How it's dark on this side and light on this side. This is power wood, rubber wood on this half. And this half is black willow. So it's willow. And if you can see the reload here, it is also willow, half willow, half power wood, half rubber wood. Here. The hearth is also a hybrid. It is half willow in the back here, and the front here, uh, along the notches, is lighter. This is rubber wood. This is power wood. So for the first time ever, I'm going to do a hybrid spindle of willow rubber wood with a hybrid hearth of willow, black willow, and rubber wood. And uh, my reload is a little crooked. But see how that goes. So again, I'm going to raise up the floor. Save myself a little time and energy. Right. Now you can see what I did here was uh, I put some medium density fiberboard on the bottom as a base. That's glued together as a shelf. This is actually an old um, Inuit trick that they used to do with uh, their mouth drills. So I got that from them, this shelf idea. So we're going to do an Egyptian drill. <clears throat> so you can see the spindle is wider than the reload. So this is not a bow drill. A bow drill, the, the entire spindle would be the same size. Right? But the, the fact that the spindle is thicker means that I'm going to get a lot of torque. Torque means that no matter how hard I put pressure down, 
this uh, pressure hand brace, by the way, is also a hybrid. The bottom part is black willow, and the top part is power wood, rubber wood, together. gonna go? No idea. The thing about these spindles is that they're tall, so I can't really get my whole body weight on them. They're making the string stretch, so now it's going to be more even. So two hacks. One is all rubber wood. The other is a hybrid of willow and rubber wood. And both obviously work. That's scientific proof that they work. Future. I'll be doing some more hacks, different kinds of woods that never been done before. And uh, the methods are decided on by the hardness of the wood. So the harder the wood, the, uh, the more complicated the apparatus. So to make it work. All right. All right. Thanks for watching. Welcome to Fire Dojo. So, uh, someone asked, uh, what is Fire Dojo and what do you do? Well, uh, perhaps one of these days I should clarify. Uh, Fire Dojo is here for everyone and anyone that wants to learn the art of friction fire. Um, call that art fire keeping. All right. And, uh, so here we do every single known method of rubbing sticks together to make fire. Okay. And uh, so if you want to know anything there is to know about any method uh, to do friction fire, you'll find it here. All right. And uh, it's not just talk. 
uh, we can we do every method, any method, every any method, any known method that legitimately works, because there's uh, myths and rumors of s some methods and techniques that are supposed to work, but that's what they are, myths and uh, crap, really. <laughs> All right, so today, what are we doing today? Well, I'm testing a new board that I'm giving out to uh, a friend. This one is uh, Western Red Cedar, okay? The board, it's been tested once here, and I'm gonna use that hole again right now, All right? Uh, if I remember correctly, there are 60 uh, sockets here, ready to go. So we're, today we're gonna do two hand drills. We're gonna do golden rod. Now this one's pretty thin. This one is 3 eighths of an inch in diameter, all right? And we're gonna test a prickly lettuce, Lactuca seriola. And this one is 7 sixteenths of an inch in diameter at the base. Okay. And as you can see, both of these have never been used. I'm gonna start with the, none of these have been used. So I'm gonna start with the 7 sixteenths inch uh, prickly lettuce. We're gonna see how that one goes. All right. So I have to do the whole, the whole gamut. I've got to warm it up, fill the notch with dust, and uh, ignite that dust. So, ready? Here we go. I'm gonna do the floating method. Okay. There's the the traditional. Uh, put your pressure on, and your hands. Work their way down to the bottom. Now I'm not really doing it, obviously. And you hold, and you go back up, and you start again, and you go back down, and you go back up again. That's the traditional way that most people know. But with floating, with floating, you have just enough pressure to hold everything in place, and speed and rotation are very important, and your hands just stay at the top. That's why it's called floating. It looks like your hands are just floating at the top. Hear the squeaking? That means I don't have friction yet. The friction is not there. So I'm going to apply a little bit more pressure and a little bit more speed. And you can hear that the sound is changing. Okay. Now there's some actual abrasion. Okay. We can see that there's a little bit of smoke and there's dust forming at the bottom. Okay, and I'm just going to keep going with rotation and speed, and just keep going, yep. just keep going, and now I'm just going to allow my hands to just fall down a little bit, okay. but I think we have a call anyway. So here we go. And there we go. Every method we teach here at Fire Dojo is done with scientific proof that everything, the structure and the function are balanced and work. And there's your proof. So the design here is, uh, this is called a bento box design, which is a, like a Japanese lunch box where everything is compartmentalized. So your hand drill spindle goes in there and it stays in there. But what we like about this design is that it holds your, your coal in place. See, I'm not losing my coal anywhere. And then I just take my tinder bundle and I would just put it in my tinder bundle, just like that. Right. So that set obviously works. Um, this one 
the prickly lettuce is going to go with this one here. That's about 23, a little under 23 inches, the length of the spindle. Okay, and it's held with the elastics, so it doesn't go anywhere. And what's nice about it, if you accidentally step on it, you can't crush the spindle. The spindle is safe. So it's also called a base case. So that design. All right, we're gonna try the golden rod just for fun. Uh, I'm going to stay right there. I'm just gonna clean this out a little bit for a second. Now the, the golden rod has never been used, right? So I have to mate this together, new, newly together, okay? And uh, so you have to warm it up. There's those three stages. There's the warm up and uh, fill the notch with dust and ignite the dust, okay? So because this spindle is a little thinner, I get more rotations per spin. Okay. You can see I can also go a little bit faster because of the thinness of the spindle, but you can only go so thin because if it's too thin, it'll just cut through. And there we go again. Scientific proof that our golden rod and our prickly lettuce work on our hearth, our bento box base case uh, hearth of Western Red Cedar. The cold can't go anywhere. Take your tinder bundle, put it in your tinder bundle, and light your fire. So going around. This one also fits. And uh, what I'm doing today is not only does this person get the uh, the prickly lettuce, they're going to get a gift of the golden rod as well. Obviously that doesn't fit, but it keeps together. Can't lose them. All right. Any questions or comments? I'm always at the end of an email on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. And see you next time. Hello, welcome to Fire Dojo. What I have here, is a leftover piece of a tree obviously it was a norway maple and you see all the line variations in here this is called spalting spalting is when a fungus invades the dead wood of a tree and it makes these beautiful uh, patterns as well as color changes in between sections. Uh, it was a very big Norway maple and we took a lot of the wood with us when we moved and a lot of this firewood that you see here uh, came from that Norway maple. Here you could see some spalting in here going on on this end grain and, uh, and a couple other pieces too. There's some in here, along here. Um, if we cut into them, because this is all weathering, uh, we would probably see more spalting. Okay. Um, here's the thing. I just bought a brand new still MS-170. Now, it doesn't have a lot of horsepower, but um, 
I'm testing it and it did a pretty good on this this oak log that I had I quartered it now this isn't really old oak um, I cut this down for a neighbor last year so it's it's still still very very hard okay so I quartered that and it did a pretty good job I quartered a section of uh, eastern red cedar or aromatic red cedar which is actually juniper by the way but here's what I'm gonna do I brought with us when we moved these huge stumps and uh, I never got around to cutting these and they've been sitting two more years beyond what they were already sitting when we cut these so uh, I'm going I'm about to enter this small one here this is the smallest one I think and uh, see what's inside care to join me let's go So there's obvious more spalting at the top, but all of this is going to be cut away to begin with because none of this wood on top is good. It's completely rotten. So more spalting has, uh, which is fungus, has entered the wood, obviously, and there's a big long streak that comes up here, but uh, it just took off one side. So I'll tell you what, I'm going to cut this whole thing up into boards. And we'll see what's inside when I'm done. All right, here we go. All right, so here's my yield. These are pretty darn good. So I cut it over an inch. These are about six quarter, meaning an inch and a half in width. I kept them a pretty good width in case I have to take off a lot off the surfaces if they're not straight. 
but look at these patterns. They're pretty amazing. I'm sorry about the lighting. It's really it's cloudy and dark out here right now. This one is pretty amazing. I'm going to make a lot of good sets out of these. So these are however going to have to uh, sit inside for a while and get acclimated to uh, a dry climate because they've been outside literally for years. All right. And now we're going to do this one. And after that, I'm going to see if I have time to do this one. That one's going to be crazy. All right, let's go. All right, so here's the yield, 10. So it's a week later and uh, I got a lot of nice, thick boards out of those logs. And look at the spalting on these, they are just gorgeous. They are beautiful. Look at that. And I cut these nice and thick. They're at least an inch and a half. So I'm going to get some, some good sets out of these. I got more inside, but these are just what I left outside. Now in regards to the last stump that I was going to cut up. All I did was block it out. But look at the spalting on this. This is amazing. So I basically just rectangled it off. And once I saw what was inside, I think I'm not going to cut it up for boards. I think I'm going to make something else out of this. So, uh, in old Japanese, uh, they have these things called hibachi. Not the hibachi that we know in America where you, you barbecue with coals. A hibachi is a wooden vessel that actually holds a fire with coals that you do cook over and it also heats up a room that is a real hibachi and i'm thinking maybe i'll make one out of this or something but uh this is just too nice i think to cut up and i got plenty of boards to play around with. so but to leave this solid i'm gonna i'm gonna do something else with this so so it was very fortunate for me and for us 
that my wife had the common sense to record me chainsawing down the plum tree because I had completely forgotten to set up the camera and uh, so that I could record this. <laughs> well, a lot just happened, but I didn't record it. Um, I just fell the tree back here, mainly because it was dead and dying. It has these galls of fungus or something on them. And it's some kind of exotic cherry, which I can't uh, identify. But this is one of two branches that's completely dead like this with these growths. So here's the other branch that's dead with the growths. And this is the only live branch. And uh, again, it's some kind of exotic cherry, I think. So it's really reddish uh, on the inside. So I saved the trunk here. And uh, let's have a look inside. All right, so this is the inside. And it is just gorgeous shades of red. I love it, except it has this rot that goes all the way to the pith. Of course, I'll be cutting that out. So let's see what happens. All right, not bad. I tried cutting it uh, through this rot that went to the core here. And I tried hitting it right down where it goes so that I can save as much wood as possible. This is probably my best side, this one. And I'll get some good stuff out of here, too. I wish I knew what this was. Look at these colors. This is amazing. It's beautiful. Just like some kid would add it with crayons. <laughs> All right. These are long enough for... Oh, this is definitely going to be long enough for a good board, too. It's two feet long. So we'll see what happens. Now I gotta clean this up.